And once again, we have returned with another episode of Legends of the Drowned Isles Campaign 2, The Great Confusion, the homebrew 5th ed D&D &D campaign of, uh, of island-spanning, well, town-spanning uh, adventure, uh, possibly also through deep dark dungeons and so forth. I'm the host GM and one responsible for making this weird world. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One, and I'm joined once again by my players, starting on my left with Silas. Hi, my name is Pat. I'm playing Silas Marsh. Hello, uh, my name is Marie, and I am playing Annie. Hey, I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medric, half-orc cleric. All right, and we're going to get right back into it, uh, right back into the, the map where we were before. And I realized I spent all my time working on the map and all kinds of other things and completely forgot to write a summary for last week. So, uh, briefly, uh, after discovering your friends were missing, Dr. Marigold and Sandy, uh, Sandy Bell, you followed some clues, fell down a portal, and ended up in this strange sort of world. Now, I have adjusted the uh, light settings this time again, um, and I've created all the necessary barriers. So you're going to see a lot more shadow in here. Um, for uh, each of you, you have a different point of view um, with... Uh, with starting with the simplest perhaps uh, Medric you glow a little bit so you'll see a little bit around you and then mostly darkness otherwise unless you choose to create a torch okay. um, so you'll see just a kind of a bubble around you uh, for Annie uh, you have night vision goggles which I believe I gave a tint to um, so I think you might see uh, the world in slightly uh, uh, I think rose colored <laughs> I can't remember the color tint, and I can't see it from my particular screen. Uh, and for the most complicated one, which is uh, um, Silas's, you have both dark vision and you have, which is uh, tinted a different color uh, to indicate kind of the amount you can see when it's in total darkness. And then as you get closer to light sources, that, that goes away. So you should see um, kind of light centered on yourself. Um, uh, the light cutoff gets a little bit weird. Um, it is in explorer mode, or it should be, uh, I guess it's not an explorer mode. Uh, but just keep that in mind that moving around will be significant. Uh, and it's not just something where you can, can move and come back. Um, you'll have to be careful about that. Um, that said, um, to keep movement flowing, um, we will go in an order. It's not an initiative order. That will change if we get into a combat. But we will do an order of, of, of unless someone has a particular order of, uh, of people moving, uh, it'll go through Silas, Annie, and Medric, just as the order I have them on the screen, just to make it easier for me. But again, if you have a marching order, um, certainly feel free to, to do that as well. Now, just recently, you had uh, come through... A doorway. The doorway uh, is no longer visible as a doorway on the map. Basically, right there, there was a blockage. And I do see that there are certain um, uh, weird edge cases in how it displays things. Uh, also, for uh, both the players and for those of you at home, the little eyeball of the POV character. What I've done is I've given it dark vision 20 feet, and I'll try to keep it m roughly in the center of the party. If you guys spread out a lot, I may end up, uh, maybe I'll clone the, the, the eyeball. It was not actually there in the scene, just so that you know. Now, the place that you've encountered so far have very strange, irregular walls. Not made of stone, but seemingly made of something a l close to stone, a little bit pliable, with all kinds of pitted marks on the sides. For the most part... Yeah. Go ahead. I was, I was wondering, does it remind us of uh, the arm that we were in the first time we encountered uh, Taraz? Uh, in a vague sense, yes, but the arm was um, some sort of almost plaster-like surface uh, beyond which you saw tons of, of mechanical parts moving. Um, the, the central tunnels themselves were straighter and more functional, and there was a constant sound of churning uh, over. This one does not have that feature. 
Um, beyond the surface of the walls that you can see just seems to be more of the same wall substance. But it is very, very uh, hard, a little bit slightly sort of brown, brown red, and little pitted marks all over the place, which you realize after having encountered this enormous thing, sort of large, uh, 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 almost a rollerball type thing with little minuscule picks in it that move through the tunnel and seem to scour the walls, uh, which caused you kind of di diving out of the way. But also, um, it opened up the doorway in front of you uh, very briefly as you jumped on through. So that's probably what causes the pitting and scarring that you're seeing on the walls. Okay. Um, it's showing a stone floor here just simply for contrast, but really the floor is is much the same as the walls. Um, they aren't as squared out and... Uh, and uh, sharp cornered as it might uh, seem. That's simply an artifact of the the thing I use to make the uh, to make the um, the system to make the maps. Pardon me. Um, you also know that those those loud things tend to uh, move very very quickly. The one that you saw uh, just a moment ago has already kind of vanished down what looks like a from your perspective a right hand hallway. You also note that there seems to be a, right, a left-hand hallway as well. How much fact. sound is? How much? How loud is it? Like, i.e., can we hear it coming from far away? Um, the the walls tend to absorb a fair amount of the sound, but yeah, you can tend to hear it coming, um, partially because of the way it's interacting with the walls and kind of chewing up things. There's a little bit of of uh, of sound from that as well. It does leave a bit of debris in its wake. Um, not that it's digging into the walls constantly, but you can, you can tell that it's kind of, it's kind of a dumb thing. It's not really, uh, directed so much as it just has a mission and go through. And in fact, uh, as you're standing there, the, the sound kind of, um, reduces as that one moves away. Um, the, the walls, uh, while absorbent of sound have been transmitting to you a little bit of two voices as well. Uh, one you hear only weakly, uh, almost as though the, the sound uh, or the person was not able to or was not shouting nearly as much. That voice you do recognize as Marigold. And aside from that, another voice, which you haven't, uh, you don't know who it belongs to aside from the uh, likelihood that it is Clockwinder uh, themselves, uh, in fact, you've heard Marigold uh, sort of shout out the name Clockwinder, so you're pretty sure uh, that you can hear them. Um, and as you're standing there taking it in, you once again hear a snippet of dialogue. Um, vaguely from uh, uh, Marigold, there's something which you can't make out. Um, but you hear the, the clear, cutting voice of the other one, Clockwinder, shouting out in desperation almost. We were partners, Marigold. You and I, more like brothers. You of all people know the kinds of things we sought out. What we discovered was wondrous. So, I'm going to sprinkle little bits of dialogue as you get closer, uh, but it gets drowned out a little bit as you hear what sounds like another one of those things moving closer. Is it coming from the direction of the voices or from the other direction? Uh, make a perception check. Perception. I'm actually perceptive on this character. <laughs> Unlike in real life. You are the most perceptive. A, this, I this group, it, but here we go. Oh, this group is not, not terribly perceptive. Um, you think that... Uh, it is drowning out the voices, so it's probably coming from the same direction. I'll let my I'll let my friends know. Okay. What would you There's like another one coming our way. Oh. It might be the same one. This place might this these paths they might loop around. Should we go to the right? Whatever. Uh, Pat, you're muted. Yep. No, I mean, it, if it's coming from the other side, let's go to this one for now and wait till it goes by. Yep. All right. So, 
Or should I be able to see my friends uh, on the map? Because there's like this little, like, five feet of glowing around me, but I, like, everybody else you is like, do not out. have blind, dark vision, I believe. Yes, he does. Yeah, do you? Okay. Yeah. He's a half orc. Let me double check then. Because if you do have dark vision, it might not have been uh, set up here. Uh, what is 60 feet? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, looks like I missed that one. Uh, okay. You should be able to see things better now. Yep. Perfect. Okay. What Thank I will you. do is. I will also set the eyeball to 60 feet, which should be the minimum of all of you, I think. Okay. So, yes, you should see uh, right on the edge of uh, the area. Let's see. Um, as you move along, you hear that sound growing closer from behind where you were and then fading fairly quickly as well. So do we just assume it went by the door or it, it entered the door? Um, you don't see it pass behind you, so. Okay, so it's probably safe. So it'll be back in however much time that elapsed between like when we saw it last time. That, that probably made no sense, but like. If that's the only one. Yeah. Uh, in front of you, you can hear vaguely the sound of the one that you knew passed down this direction. So you figure there's at least two. There's right, an echo here. Muted, Pat. Well, we need to go up to the towards. Yeah, now that that orb has passed, yeah, let's go. I follow. Okay. Right. I'm not used to being able to see well in the dark. I think this is one of the first times I've actually used these. It's the first. Also, like, feel things like I don't usually. It's weird. Another step out of dialogue as you move along, although this time getting slightly drowned out as you can hear the, the sound ahead of you growing uh, more strongly. Don't play coy with me, Marigold. I know you still want the power of life and the power of death. Um, as you move up in that upper direction... Uh, I think you can see this the fresh turned... Uh, 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 fresh turned ground essentially in front of you and once more <clears throat> I'll move these excuse me I see kind of a yeah like an orangish orb up there is that one of the creatures that is one of the the, the things yeah okay are we allowed to move the eyeball uh, yes if you want to move the eyeball that that works for me as well uh, kind of in the center of things. Ah, it's I gone. Have a, I have a bunch. <laughs> it disappeared. Oh, here it is. No. I, oh. if, if you can't keep track of the eyeball, there's not much I can do about that. All right. Uh, I can see it. Damn it, Nax, we trusted you. <laughs> <laughs> you lost it already. Um, from behind you, you can hear the sound uh, increasing. And yes, you caught a glimpse, basically as you were coming around um, Silas, you caught a glimpse up ahead of uh, one of those things. I'm going to pause here and see which direction the voice see, voices seem to be coming from. And actually from there, if you take a moment to listen, um, you hear another snippet of dialogue. This time you can hear uh, the sound of Marigold a little bit more clearly. You're mad, Clockwinder. Yes, Marigold, I'm very angry. Angry with you and this accursed world. You left me behind, Marigold. I would have died if not for what I had found. In that instant, as you're standing there waiting, 
you hear growing behind you and, in fact, emerging from the tunnel behind you one of those things. Run. Um, and then you hear from the other direction. And in fact, I think you can just see the edge of it starting to appear. Make a perception check to try to figure out which of the three hallways you see near you. Uh, 15 total. <laughs> Looks like 15 is the order of the day. 15. You're pretty sure that it came from the middle one, the one nearest you. Yeah. Silas is going to pull back slightly because I th he thinks they're on a path and I th and he thinks this is the safe spot between them. Okay. And wait for them to go past. Is Annie going to move? I who can see better than me because I am aware that I miss things. Yeah, Silas will mention there's one coming from ahead as well. If I see Silas go like th this against the wall, I go like this against the wall. <laughs> okay. How about Medric? Yeah. I'm hoping I'm like out of the way in this little alcove. <laughs> You do notice like that here, here there's one right beside you that came. That's the one you'd seen before. Yeah, I'll hope it goes time. the other way because there's no running away from it. <laughs> okay. I will. Well, I've, I've had my shield out this entire time, but I'll like bring mm -hmm. it up. Yeah, shield In ready. case I can like okay. stop it, maybe. You halt there and pause for a second or two, seeing what, what happens. It does seem Weird. as though it is on a prescribed route. And in fact, it passes through the uh, the doorway, opening up in the, in the process, vanishing off to what would be your right facing down that hallway. However, coming from the other direction, you hear one now barreling down this hallway um, to right there, which I think might only be Silas, perhaps a little bit of... Uh, Actually, all three of you should see a little bit of it. Yeah. Yep. As you see it now, it's starting to turn downward. So it's not following through the, the hallway you're in, but in fact following a prescribed route that takes it down this middle hallway. All right, let's follow that one. Well, when we first came in, I saw one passing up passing from this side to the upper hallway, so it may go back and forth. Uh, so side alcoves we could hide in in case it reverses. Sounds good. Sounds like a plan. Okay, so are you waiting for a moment or are you going to move somewhere? Uh, waiting for it to oh, pass by so we can the, uh, run yeah. through after it. Okay. Uh, as you wait for a second, this one. Still there. You see, you hear the one that had passed by you pass that through that door, and once it's beyond the door, you can't really hear it much at all. The one in front of you does continue down this hallway and come to a stop and then turn back and start coming back up the hallway. So it goes all the way down, just out of view, and then turns back. Silas puts a hand that. up and says, back up. <laughs> it's coming back. I bump into Silas, just barely. Okay. Once it passes, we'll have to run in down the hall behind it and try to get as far as we can. Another snippet of dialogue as it passes on. Uh, let's see. You miss the first part of this. It gets lost. The weaker voice of Marigold not able to, to be heard over the sound of this this uh, chuddering creature. But you hear the response from, from Clockwinder. Farvin, don't call me that name any longer. That was the name I lost. The name you betrayed. I am now only the Clockwinder. 
in his service. And once again, this thing, as you pause there, it comes right to the edge of this, and there's that moment of, wait, which direction is it going now? But it does indeed turn right away from you and start heading down the hallway. Okay, gonna dash. Go, One, go, go. two, three, four, five. That's first movement. One, two, three, four. Okay. Make a stealth roll at disadvantage. Uh, you still have, I believe... Um, no, uh, I do not. Okay. Uh, I put up... Uh, I put up something that required concentration, and I don't remember what it was now. Okay. I think it was... Uh, was it using the staff, though? You used the uh, staff for... Uh, well, yeah, but the staff, the staff still requires me to have concentration. Right. So, before you go any further... I'm going to take that eyeball off the map. Okay. Yes, it, the eyeball should three. never go... Okay, one direction. If you are going to move the eyeball, it has to stay at where the last person was, not the front, because it has okay. better vision than some of you. However, um, all of you, all three of you make stealth checks with this advantage. <laughs> this mm -hmm. is going to go glowingly. <laughs> yeah, I got a three, so my last two movements end up there. Okay. I'm just right it was a 12 end. and a 1, so we, we oh. blew it, y'all. Oh, boy. Okay. Um, and Marie did, Marie's fine. Uh, or what? sorry, Annie's fine. Annie's like, why are you guys making so much noise as you jog along? Uh, however, uh, in front of... Neither of you have any. I'm the only one with armor on. Why are you guys <laughs> making so much noise? <laughs> as, you around, armor. Uh, as you come around the corner, uh, Silas, and you're kind of jogging to try to get, get away from I'm, the, the other... I'm sprinting. Um, you do kind of almost come to a halt as you see in front of you a small little glowing red eye, uh, and then joined by a second red eye. And looking down, you see another one of these mechanical rats... Uh, as you, uh, Medrick, start rolling around and you're, you're, you know, practically a small torch on and of yourself uh, and kind of highlight Silas <laughs> as you stand behind him, giving this beautiful silhouette to make it very obvious that you're there. Uh, Annie, you kind of look forward and, and see that, you know, you are kind of literally walking with a torch. Uh, it's just a walking torch at this point. But you see the, the uh, creature react um, with uh, a brightness in the eyes, and it opens its mouth and lets forth a loud mechanical screech uh, that seems to resonate off the walls. Now, beyond that, uh, I believe that... Uh, oops, i got to scroll over for those at home. And I'll move the eyeball to get now to where two of you are. Uh, beyond that, uh, you can also make out a slightly glowing, or slight glow coming from another mechanical construction. This one much larger. Uh, it looks four-legged, kind of like the, the the rat, but has uh, large stripes down its back. Uh, some sort of other mechanical creature standing in the in the uh, area, and I think you can just make out from where you are. Uh, actually, I can check this. I know now. I can check this. Uh, no, you can't see uh, anyone else. However, with the loud mechanical screech, uh, you hear uh, Clockwinder's voice. Um, Intruders! Fine. Then her life is forfeit. And you are responsible for that, my old friend. Stop them. He orders. Uh, and you hear the, the sort of receding, clattering sound. It's very odd, um, kind of like... Uh, hmm. Kind of like the sound of some of the spiders you've heard before, but mechanical and... Uh, let's say... Um, clattering um, however at this point we will roll initiative as you are entering a a uh, a combat of some kind now i need to figure out how to 
<laughs> do all of this stuff. All right, that guy. Uh, shoot, I need to put up a thing here. And those aren't there anymore. And why I did I it have... right this time. Okay. Good, good. Old Annie. And I've got an old Medric. And I've got an old Silas. There we go. One moment as I get my initiatives in order. <laughs> That's terrible. Uh, let's see. Also terrible. Excellent. Yay. And Keep doing one, terrible. <laughs> um, that one you cannot see. So I'll move him to that level. And... Okay. Let's see if everything made it on. It did. All right. So, despite the screeching alarm that's there, uh, the three of you actually get an opportunity to act before anything else. Excellent. So, I'm going to sneak up to this edge here and peek around the corner. Okay. I am going to guess. That is here. going to be... Uh, a perception check to see what you can see from there. Nice. For once in this campaign. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it was a little hard to see the tiny little creature that's standing in front of Silas, but you do make out. You kind of are able to use Silas's own outline to figure out the parameters of the creature. There is no light in here, but one thing that strikes you right away is sort of an acrid waft of, of air that, that flows outward from this strange cavernous space. Uh, there's a, 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 a kind of earthy, acidic tone to the whole space. Um, that you feel reminds you of bile. So uh, in another stomach is what my brain is saying. It, it feels like a stomach in some ways, yes, but not quite. Um, you also are able to just make out just on the edge of your vision. I'm not sure if you can actually see it technically according to the, the uh, uh, thing yep. here. Okay. Um, you can make out... Yep. You can make out this giant and creature, this. which which uh, Silas had seen. Um, and it strikes you kind of odd in that moment uh, that you do kind of make out the shape of a badger, maybe? About three feet long, about two feet high, uh, made out of me mechanics. You can see that it might have had skin at one point, but now there's no flesh on the outside. Just sort of metal slats and a whirring engine on the inside. Um, in the room itself... The floor and the ceiling and the walls are all very, very smooth, as if they have been worked or smoothed out or perhaps melted down a little bit. Um, the uh, the uh, over beyond the back wall where you can see, you see there are large uh, barrels represented as wood here, but they're not actually wood. They look like they're made of glass that are partially filled with liquid that seems to be seeping out of out of the wall. It looks almost like some some uh, orifice has have been tapped on the walls. Not orifice so much as a a, a a tube that comes in and out of the wall that's been sort of tapped and is slowly dripping into these areas. And you kind of, as you're looking over, you can sort of pinpoint that that's where the smell is coming from. Attached to these barrels, tied up to them, and his head a little closer to the spigot than might be comfortable, you see Dr. Marigold, looking quite disheveled, quite uh, quite uh, bruised and uh, beaten. Um, because you also did pretty well, you sense something uh, just out of view um, to the south of him, some sort of mechanical... Uh, 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 movement. 
Now, that was your action. That wasn't your action. I'm just going to give that as a free because you were still hidden. You are still hidden. What would you like to do? Um, I'm just going to move the eye so I can see what I can see for a second. Sure. Just th so that, that way I have my line of sight. So I do see the mouse and I do see the badger. Yeah, and Marigold. And that that is Marigold? Yes. Okay. Um, so I am going to... The... Um, Short bow at the badger. Okay. I'm hidden, so advantage. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, 21's a definite hit. Apparently, it won't roll from there, so. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> wow. Uh, is that even including anything else? That's just the base damage. No, wait. Nice. How's that working? Five. Uh, that is the five uh, damage for the piercing and then sneak attack. Oh, okay. It's, it doesn't. It didn't break it down. It's just this lump of ni plus nineteen. <laughs> uh, yes, as the arrow kind of strikes through, pe piercing through the uh, elements of the uh, of the uh, the open faced metal that's there, and seems to to grind inside, and you hear the whole thing kind of grind, 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 and then chunk as the pieces fall apart. One down. Nice. You still have some uh, movement left. Am I able to sneak past uh, Medrick to get to here? Uh, you are no longer hidden, but you can you can slip by no. him. Yes. Well, I, I mean, I mean, like squeeze by. Yep. It's a friendly space. There. No problem there. And I am going to. What's my health at? Forty-five. Uh, I'm going to. I. Uh, use my master of tactic to give. Medric advantage to hit the mouse. Excellent. Okay. How do you want to? How do you want to phrase that? <laughs> hit the That's mouse right there. <laughs> <laughs> Step, Step on, on it. Hammer. All right, uh, Silas, you're, you're up next. You're kind of you're kind of blocking the passageway a little bit there to get any further. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, uh, Silas just say cover your ears, and then he's going to booming blade the rat. Mm, okay. I don't have enough health to. I will also follow uh, instructions. Uh, there we go. Um, booming blade. It uh, that misses. Okay. So the rat kind of flattens out a little bit, skewers uh, skewers itself towards the or skews itself towards the wall a little bit, and lets the wall take most of the damage. Doesn't seem to hurt the wall that much, but you can see kind of the rippling thunder pass over it. It is okay. very loud, however. Then Silas will attempt to go past it. One, two, three. Um, it does occupy the space, so you will need to either make some sort of dodge type roll, or it will get an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so make a, hmm, let's call it an athletics or an acrobatics roll. To, okay, there you go. Uh, it does yep. get a chance to to uh, nip at your heels as you pass by. Sure. Um, mm -mm. Uh, that's one there. Oh, it rolled on my screen. That's not really helpful. Oh, 10. Okay. 
Not sure why those are still on. I turned them all off, but a 10 misses anyway. As you get closer into the room, you can see now what looks like a, a hollow person on the far uh, up opposite side of where Dr. Marigold is. You can see also there are deep gro grooves in the floor, almost as though um, something has been heavy has been dragged across the floor in multiple directions. You also can make out that there are multiple entrances and exits to this room. Technically, entrances are also exits, but... You say it's a hollow person? It appears to be what looks like a, a hollow statue, but it is moving okay. and kind of kind of shifts its upper body and looks towards you. You can see that it's also um, carrying... Uh, nope, not carrying anything, actually, in this case. Um, well, I'll keep moving to okay. there. Uh, yeah. Um, does uh, Marigold look injured? Definitely. He's got lots of scrapes and bruises across his face. Oh. You can see that there's a nasty gash across his forehead. His clothing has been torn and twisted in different places. Plus, he's also tied very awkwardly against this barrel. Okay. Healing word. He gets uh, six hit points back. Nice. What does the healing word sound like from from Mr. from the, the child of the mother? Well, it would sound like a nice pure melodic sound, but there's some jarringness to it. Soothing. Like it's slightly wrong. soothing. <laughs> Jaggedly soothing. All right. It's like it's slightly wrong. Uh, and I think it, we do, uh, I do not see Sandy anywhere here. You do not. Okay. Um, then just... Uh, my last two movement will be there. And Silas is done. Okay. And you can see that that passageway continues on. Um, it looks as though it has been recently scoured. Uh, that is Silas. Medrick, you're up. I will take one step and step on the rat with a hammer. Okay. Wow, those are off the rolls. So 11 total uh, with advantage. Unfortunately, that's not enough to hit the, the rat. It scurries over to one side very carefully. And I'll keep going forward, I guess. So one, two, three. Okay. And again, to move through its space, you're going to require an acrobatics check. Okay. 13. Uh, 13 is not enough. So we'll get a swipe at you as you pass by it. Uh, in it, hmm. it's noting that you uh, are all invading, so it's going to try to make a different type of attack as it unhinges its jaws and clumps down on you. Uh, that's an 18 to hit. 19. Uh, 19 AC? Yeah. Nice. Um, you see it's kind of, it's, it's back of its body kind of uh, roll up into a little of a ball of its springs forward. Its jaw extends, not just the, the, the mouth itself, but like half of the body seems to extend and clamp towards you kind of like a uh, bear trap. But you're able to just pull your leg out, of, out in time uh, and av avoid being chomped. That's literally what oh, wait, I call the fuck. action. The shield has to be on fire for it to be 19. It's 18. So yeah, that, that, that works. Okay. Uh, then you are hit. Uh, you take uh, 12 sakes. points of piercing damage and you are restrained, which means you don't actually get your full movement. Uh, you are held right there. Oops. Right. Well, shoot. I moved you instead of it. There you go. Uh, 
So you were held back by it as it's now clumped onto your uh, your leg and is holding you there. Um, that is your action and move. Yep. Uh, do I, right, I, I I can turn the shell on as a bonus action? I believe so. In retrospect, I probably should have done that first, but hey, thinking is not my forte. <laughs> hey, that's it's it's the, the, the fury of combat, as they say. All right, Annie, you're up next. Shield on. I'm up next. I, I thought the mouse was up. Just one second. I had to resort things. You are correct. That's right. All of you guys yes. went first. Uh, but in fact, it is something else which goes first. This is no longer there. My Mecha Badger. I didn't change the name on that one. It should have been changed. <laughs> uh, the name should have been changed to protect my innocence. Uh, but around the corner up ahead, perhaps attracted by the amount of noise or perhaps uh, already peer, uh, ready to go, um, you hear, and in fact, probably Silas hears this the loudest, what sounds like dozens of, uh, of scurrying uh, legs and features and so forth, as indeed around the corner, uh, what was its movement? Okay. Uh, come a cloud of smaller, tiny uh, mechanical mice. And they're going to stop there and see if they can see anything. Probably not. Uh, nope. So they continue on to where they thought the thing had been happening. So, Medric, especially closer to you, you can see this sort of cloud of mechanical mice, all moving with intent and purpose as if one creature, but made up of all these tiny little shimmering bodies uh, as they kind of turn and twist over each other. Uh, a swarm, in fact, of mechanical uh, mechanical bodies. And that's that one. Uh, then you see the uh, hollow human, hollow body, which actually you don't see, uh, but which did see uh, Silas duck into this other side as it kind of clomps <coughs> towards you. You can see that while hollow appearing, it does have a spine on the inside uh, made up of mechanics and bits and pieces. And in that moment, as it gets closer to you, you it's not that you recognize this particular instance, but it does bear a disturbing similarity to some of uh, the Taraz creatures that you fought in the arm. This one of a different, different design, different mechanics, and weirdly almost... Uh, more like a childlike interpretation of the same thing, but it does stomp around the corner and take a couple of swings at uh, Silas. Uh, that is a 21 to hit. Should I move uh, the eye? I guess I can't. Yeah, that'll hit. Uh, yes, we'll just update the eye a little bit here. Whoops, I put it outside the world there. Uh, seven uh, bludgeoning damage. And it takes, whoops, have to ignore that. It takes another swing. Uh, and an 11 misses, I believe. Oh, wait, sorry, that's not the to hit, that's the damage. Um, yeah, we're not seeing any to hits here. Oh, you're not seeing them at all? Nope. Okay. All we see is the damage results. Uh, 18 to hit them. On the that's one. a hit. And. Eight points of bludgeoning damage as it comes around trying to smack at you. Um, oh, I see. Okay, no. The, those, okay, the, the damage and the attacks look the same. Uh, that yeah, 7.1 was only a 12 to hit, though. Um, wasn't on my screen. It was a 21. I don't know why I didn't add that up correctly. Um, wait, what hmm. happened here? I see eight plus four. Yeah, it's yeah. I'm having some weird interactions between D and D Beyond. Uh, okay, well the first one. Uh, wait now. Yeah, the first one I guess missed. Then the twelve misses. The eighteen hits for eight points of uh, of damage. Yeah. I'll try to figure out if I can get this to properly report things. 
Okay. I don't have, uh, huh. Yeah. Beyond 20 is not uh, able to uh, organize anything. Oh, there we go. Um, okay. One second. Right. I'm going to... Um, see if I can turn off dice rolling in this thing here, because that seems to be... Uh, okay. Well, that's its turn anyway, so let's go back to the world. Uh, that makes it the mouse. The mouse has a hold of... Uh, or the mechanical rat has a hold of, of Medric. Uh, okay. You see its eyes start to glow as now it tries to take a, a shot at you. Well, now it has uh, to Medric. get a 19. Uh, but it does have advantage because it has a hold of you. Uh, there we go. Uh, 18 to hit. Just misses. 19 now, for real. Yeah. As uh, you kind of bring up the fiery shield and see the the uh, gleaming uh, uh, red glowing damage kind of crawl across it and then cut into the ceiling a little bit. Um, hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah that works. Uh, let's see that. I need to move closer. I will have. Uh, Actually, you're going to be able to see it anyway. Um, as uh, Silas, you hear the sound of something uh, taking large uh, jumps as it moves along, and you can hear the sound of of stone being ground underfoot. And you see coming up the hallway now from behind you. What looks like a very large bear, uh, but again, you can see sort of the glint of, of metal a little bit. Uh, you can see that it's it's uh, uh, got a little bit of flesh on it or a little bit of surface covering, uh, but looks as though it has seen some some damage, uh, but it is now charging down uh, the hallway. In fact, it will make its second move. And even with the narrow part that's right there, you can see it. Uh, kind of charging through and then jamming its way through. Doesn't quite get to you. It kind of outstretches its arm and then and then tries to swing at you. But you can see that it's going to take a bit more effort for it to move through there. Um, Annie, okay. you're hearing all kinds of noise up ahead. Yep, but I can see this rat, so I'm going to steady aim. Okay. Take a moment. Rat. Take a breath. Uh, 25 hits. As you very carefully take aim at Medric and then lower ever so slightly so you're not hitting him. Much appreciated. Ooh, that's nice. Nice. As once more the arrow goes driving on through. Um, and Medric, you actually feel the point of the arrow as it pierces through the body of this thing. Uh, but it doesn't quite uh, connect to you. However, it does not let go. Uh, and still seems to be cool, hanging cool. on. And that is me. Well, it will get. It will let go when I step on it a second time with a hammer. <laughs> Accurately this time. Silas, you are in um, hmm. a rock and a hard place. Might be appropriate description. You can see a swarm that's running across the the entire space. Yeah. This thing in front of you and the massive thing something. behind you. Oh. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okie dokie. Um, okay. Well. So the huge thing looks like it's going to be able to squeeze through the five-foot hall. Yes. Okay. It's basically scrabbling at it and pushing its way through. 
Uh, well, okay. I am going to use my last spell slot to summon an ally. Oh. Let's see. Oh boy, I wonder if I have a <laughs> Nikon that fits here. What kind well, of ally is it? What direction uh, or what type of thing? Okay, just checking. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to summon a star spawn. Oh my, okay. Um, is it a no, wait a minute. large Actually, or a medium creature? Uh, just medium. Actually, make it a fish man. A fish man? Okay, that one yeah. I have to to dig a little bit for here, but uh... the star spawn has a an irritating. Uh... Well, it has a nice five for to all creatures. Not quite so useful for. All yes. right. There is a fish man. Where should it be appearing? Right beside you or? Uh, right here. Right next to the bear. Okay. Uh, I will give you control over that character. And put it there. You should be able to access it. As uh, yep, So what does the summoning it. look like? Because um, you have never done this before. Yeah. Well, thankfully, none of them can see it, uh, but Mr. Hollow Man can. Um, Silas probably uh, looks toward the staff because the staff is linked to Mother Hydra um, and says something in a language uh, in uh, basically aberrant, uh, which nobody else speaks. Uh, and hopefully not Clockwinder, but who knows. Um, and uh, I think dark shapes come out of Silas's mouth and into the staff, which then projects them onto the spot on the floor, which creates like a dark portal that the fish man rises up out of. Okay. Sort of swirling shadows representing whatever plane this is being drawn from, and a fishy hand comes comes out of the out of the portal portal crawls itself up, looks towards you and nods in recognition and submission, and then prepares to. Is do they get to act on this turn? Uh, they act. Uh, they share my initiative, and they act immediately after me. Okay. Um. Meanwhile, the other two uh, just hear horrible like evil language uh stuff and then uh yeah weirdly in a voice you recognize because you do recognize mm. uh silas's voice but there's an extra no. power actually i will have a perception check from uh from uh annie and medrick at least we there 18 total okay For okay. once, I can actually kind of see things. <laughs> well, you may regret that. Both of you, please make a wisdom saving throw. Nice. Maybe it's not so great. <laughs> so I apply my proficiency bonus plus my wisdom bonus. Okay, so that's... Uh, for wisdom save? Yeah, 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 for Cleric, you'd get that, yeah. 23 total. Nice. As both of you hear uh, Silas's voice, but there's an undercurrent, a secondary voice, which seems to be drawing power out of everywhere. And for that moment, you feel this sort of rush of a non-existent air as it passes by you. It sends a little shiver up your backs, but uh, it quickly subsides. It was Silas's voice. It must be under Silas's control. What, the what was that Silas. other thing? What was that other thing? And it goes. Uh... Uh, well, Silas isn't quite done yet. 
Uh, bonus okay. action, he will shillelagh his staff because I forgot to. Uh, uh, is that a uh, spell? It's a bonus action cantrip. Uh, okay, cantrip, yep. So the staff kind of takes on a little extra worldly glow. Yeah, then he's going to move there. And that'll be it for Silas's turn. Okay. Uh, then, okay, I have the stats of this thing somewhere. There we go. Uh, okay. Oh, I can. No, wait. I... I have written down that it can fly, but I'm pretty sure it cannot. Can fishmen fly? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. You'll okay. believe a fishman um, can fly. So it's got two claw attacks at plus six. Okay. Uh, so at six, that's a 14 to hit the bear creature. Uh, 14 hits. Okay. Then he does d10 plus seven slashing. Nice. So. D10, so 13 slashing damage. Wow, that was nice. And then he attempts to do it again. With an 11 to hit, that probably does not. 11 does not hit. However, it's now okay. the fishman kind of facing off and giving a bit of a growl as this uh, massive creature kind of pushes its way through. Uh, we're going to uh, reconnect the call as we've reached the end of this particular hour. So uh, please bear with us, folks at home. And we will be uh, back in just a moment. Oh, and I will make sure to... Oh, the, fish turn. the fish man. Okay. Well, welcome okay. back, everyone. Uh, we've just been informed that the mechanical bear is no longer going to heal for a moment, which, I mean... Probably not going to last that case. long anyway. But that's a good... No, it's a good point to know, and we'll, we'll have to note that especially for the future. Uh, all right. Uh, we've just had a pile of things done by, uh, by, uh, Silas. Medrick, with this thing attached to your leg, what would you like to try to do? Smash. Okay. Smashing at disadvantage. Thirteen. Thirteen. <laughs> okay. Uh, I believe, uh, thirteen misses. As you awkwardly try to batter away at this thing that's attached to your leg. But unfortunately, it seems to remain attached. And then I will smash with the shield, because that's I can do that as a bonus action. Okay. Again, and I think it uses my charisma modifier to hit, or... Was it was it charisma or dexterity? I forget. Um, I don't I have, have it in front of me, so we'll say charisma for now, and we'll figure it out later. I have it in front of me somewhere, I just can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I like this? Since that was your first instinct, that's probably right. So for, if it's a bonus action, do I still have add my proficiency bonus? Yep, and just still okay. a disadvantage, though. Because of the awkwardness. 14! That's uh, 14 one more does point. It, however. Okay, good. And what was the... Fuck. I, I lost the sheet that it's on. It's in... Oh, here it was the one like right under my keyboard that I'm staring at right now this entire time. <laughs> okay. Um it was dexterity. Fuck, that's a thirteen. God damn it. Thirteen? Okay, no, so that misses. Thirteen does not hit, unfortunately. Uh, as it just sort of as you think, but I'm a really nice guy, and it seems to not be impressed by your charisma. Uh that's your action and bonus. You are restrained, so yep. uh, you do not have movement. That puts us up to uh, the swarm. Swarm had a particular direction it was heading in and is going to do so. Uh, and it's going to head for Medric. As the smaller little creatures seem to be uh, responding maybe to the um, to the uh, the cry that the other one let out, if you can call that strange mechanical wail a cry. It swarms oh. up over you. I'm going to hit them as they pass uh, out of my reach. Uh, sure. Uh, 
shoot. Where's my sheet? There we go. Uh, okay. Ignore the extra stuff. It's just the basic. Heck, 22 to hit. That hits. Uh, and 11 bludgeoning. Nice. Uh, the damage doesn't seem to be quite as effective as you thought it would be. Possibly because there's so many tiny little bodies. Um, sure. It is magic damage, though. Yep. Uh, and they swarm over uh, Medric. Let's see. As they but begin can they penetrate to... the armor? Well, that's a good question. Let's see what happens when they try. Um, 17 to hit. No, Why is it 19? That's weird. Okay. It, it's no, showing it's you the this... die, but it's not including the plus six for whatever reason. No, it is. No, uh, it, so it literally rolled an 11. Six. No, it, uh, if you mouse over the 11, it says I it know. rolled a five plus six. I know, but I literally tell you in front of me, in the actual dice that came up, it was an 11. I don't know why it's doing that. Did you maybe say it was adding, an 11 or it wasn't an 11? It, it's an 11 plus 6. Okay. I don't know why it's not showing you the right number, but I can tell you that it actually was 17. I I have no idea why it's doing that. It, it's like it subtracted the number just to add the number again. I don't I don't know. Cool. Uh, regardless, uh, it missed, uh, unfortunately, uh, for it, not for you. Um, let's see. Um, uh, and that's its due. It is occupying the same space as Medric. So, uh, keep that in mind if you're ever attacking anything that's in Medric's own space. The other one is, uh, also, but not quite as effectively. It is off to one side. However, that's all of its turn. Uh, the armor is going to turn its attention towards, or the hollow man, I should say, is going to turn its attention towards, uh, Silas again. Um, you do hear from over on the other side where uh, where Marigold is struggling. Um, and he seems to have recognized who you are now. It seemed to have taken him a moment because it's a little dimmer and everything was going all crazy at once. Uh, but he just call out, uh, let me free, I can help. Uh, that is, uh, wow, what is, what is it doing here? Uh, this time, okay, no, it did actually add it this time. I don't know why it didn't last time. It's weird. Anyway, uh, 20 to hit. Mm -hmm. uh, 13 bludgeoning damage. As it kind of smacks you hard against the shoulder. Now it's, okay. Again, it didn't, that's so weird. It's, mm. so I rolled a six, plus four is 10. Again, it subtracted the plus four to add it again. I think There's it's some just bug there. showing the total on the die. Um, well, if you actually mouse over, it did actually, it's two plus four, which it shouldn't be two at all. It was a six on the die. Weird stuff. All right. Well, that's why I'm saying I think that the die is just showing the total, not the, the actual die number. No, it, it actually gives me the breakdown. It's six plus four. Uh, there's a bug here somewhere. Mm. Either case, 10 does not hit. Uh, and Nope. It's not going to move from where it was. Uh, the mechanical rat, once more, attempting its eye beams glowing once more as it tries to zap at uh, Medric. Let's see if it works this time. That's a 16 plus 4 is 20 to hit. That's enough. Yep. Um, total of 5 fire damage as the beams cross over you. Wait, I have fire resistance, don't I? You do. That's okay, only so two that's damage. 20. Uh, and it's staying where it's at. Uh, forgot to relabel that one, but it's labeled as Mechana Bear, because that's what I had at the moment. Uh, is going to uh, try to make uh, a bite with its beak like extension, uh, as well as one of its claws at the Fishman. That's a two on the die, so that's uh, probably not a hit. Uh, wow, that's not even. Uh, according to according to this, that's a nineteen to hit. Something's up with your. Yeah, I'm just going to take the ones that are in front of my dice here because I don't know what it's reporting. That's not even close to hit. Uh, I rolled a two, so I don't know what's going on there. Okay. 
So a total of nine does, does not, not hit. hit it. Uh, and that's a nat one. So a total of eight, but it's just a, a nat one. Oh, sorry, I rolled the wrong one. That doesn't matter. It's the same bonus. So, yep, that's weird. There's a bug there. All right. Um, but yeah, it tries to, to gnash out. Maybe it's still slightly pincered in by the narrow space that it's, it's moving through. Um, Annie, you're up. You can hear now the sound of some other battle going on yeah. just around the corner that you cannot see. And I heard Marigold say that he wants to be untied, so I am going to one. And you see these tiny little mechanical mice all crawling over uh, Medric as one of them has attached itself to his leg. He seems okay, though. They're about to get uh, roasted. I'm going to go over there, dissing this action. I'm Can sorry, I, I missed a bit of that. You're going over uh, there I'm and going to. I'm doing this and I'm disengaging so that he can't hit me. Okay. Slide on through. Okay. Avoid. I kind of imagine uh, Medric is sort of there, one foot held up by the the thing, and he's kind of dancing in in space, and you're just like, on a one, a two, through. And as you pass by, you can see the hallway of them. yeah. You see the hallway of doom, as you see the the armor that's currently facing off against uh, uh, Silas. Some strange creep creature you don't recognize, but which seems to be facing away from Silas and taking on a monstrosity that's plug plugging the hallway. And you make it's it over there. It's a fishy man. And is Does he the fish man look the same as the sea devils? <laughs> no. Okay. Good. <laughs> tied up with like rope or chains or it looks like he's bound with metal wires uh i'm going to because that was my dash Dis uh, disengage as a bonus and movement mm -hmm. we'll we'll get you out of here where's sandy I don't know where he's taking her. We have to catch up to them. He's got bad thoughts in mind. Heard that. Okay, I'm I'm back to getting like three syllables at a time. So I'm assuming that you uh, you agreed with that. Um, she said, "I I kind of figured that is what she said." Okay. I'm. I swear, it's it's not personal, Marie. I have no idea what your <laughs> your audio to me is always a little messed up. <laughs> I feel bad. Um. Okay. Is that the end of your turn then? Because that you. Okay. Yep. Uh, Silas. Well. Silas will say that he could really use some help here. Uh, and then he will booming blade, uh, the hollow man. Okay. Actually, f mm, no, no, I need to save my bonus action for a heal. Um, okay. This time it's everything but the hex. It's a 23 to hit. Oh yeah. That's definitely a hit. Uh, nine bludgeoning and four thunder. Okay. Oh, yeah. All magical. And then once again, the sound reverberates off the hall, off the walls and seems to shake it in place. And you can see little bits and pieces falling off a bolt tinker, ting, uh, tingles down or tangles, tangles, whatever falls down, making a couple of noises on its way as it seems to be uh. quite rattled by that. Then he will uh, uh, give a healing word to himself for seven points. Thank goodness. Uh, and yeah, that's his turn. Uh, then uh, the fish man will... Uh, 
take a couple of swipes at the mechanical bear. That's a 12. 12 misses, unfortunately, as it kind of glances off one of his claws. And the claw, unfortunately, uh, the second claw uh, seems to just miss it as, and kind of scrapes along the weird wall. Yep. Uh, other than that, he's going to stay put. So that's it. Okay. Medric, surrounded and overwhelmed by this collection of creatures, what would you like to do? Fucking rodents. So Medric will like stop trying to stop on the rat and sway like swish the mice away. I'll just stop, and boom, glory of midday. So they have to <laughs> make a uh, con save DC fourteen. Okay, is that everything in within the area, or is that every chosen target within the area? Do you remember how that everything. works? Everything. Okay, Actually, what's the range on that? I believe it's twenty feet, but it might increase. I was just looking at it, but I forgot already. I think it's enemies. Yeah. Just want to make sure. Um, so we're not within thirty feet with... of me is this... okay. Each hostile creature within thirty feet must okay. make a con save. Perfect. Perfect. Wow. I'm all not right. sure if that applies through walls. Hopefully, That's uh, all... it does. It does not. No. It doesn't move through walls. No. They're, they're they're they are uh, fully absorbing it. So it's a con save for the swarm. Fourteen. Yeah. And for the individual, thirteen. Those didn't even roll on my screen anymore. I have no idea what's doing, what's working. All right, uh, so I think so, that fails. 14 saves, but uh, the rest, four, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the swarm the damage saves. is 18 total. 18. Well, that easily blows away the, the little rat that's attached to your, your leg, uh, freeing you from that. And is it half on a save? Uh, they are, uh, oops, swarm. Uh, what, and it's fire damage, right? Yep. Or radiant? Uh, could be either. Um, okay. Let's take fire. All right. And it does burn away some of the swarm around you. All right. That was your action, I think? Yep. And as a bonus action, I will. Eh, I'll just kind of wait until all the rodents are like moving and the vast majority are on my shield, and then I will jump and smash the shield on the ground. So, shield attack. Okay. Still uh, at uh, disadvantage because they are swarming oh, yeah. over you. Maybe the dice will be in my favor this time. May the dice always be in your favor, as they say. It is not. It is six. Unfortunately, as they you wait for them all to, to sort of accumulate on your shield, and you slam down, and they all swarm over the top of the shield on the inside, um, as if they kind of anticipated that. But you did get rid of the Church. one that was holding you st still. Yes. So now I will go one, two. Okay. I'll go here. Okay. And as you move, and hopefully uh, some mice will them. like jump on that that thing. As you move away from them, they uh, they do try to bite at you. Let's Wait, aren't see. they like on me? I thought uh, I was they're like, carrying them. They're swarming all over you, but not carrying them. Okay, you I'll can, see them. You can move out of the swarm. Okay. Um, which is what you did, uh, but a nine well, is I'm, not. I'm... Oh, no, you decided not to. Oh, okay. You're staying in the swarm. Okay. Yeah, the other one was attached to you, but forced you not to move. This one's not attached to you, and... You can move out of the swarm. Okay, uh, so if I swarm moved... over you again, mind you. Yeah. So you did not move. So it... Yeah, I'll move. Okay. Yeah. In attempt, then in attempt, they they tried to to uh, to bite you as you moved away, but they all kind of fell off and reformed. Okay. All right, that is your action and move. Yep, and bonus action. And bonus. Okay. Uh, now the swarm. The swarm is going to move and chase after you. I just hope they you. don't go after Silas. <laughs> um, hmm. Actually, that's a good question. No. How smart are they? They are not super smart. So when they get a roll, minus three. That is most definitely not a significant <laughs> amount. Wow. Which means, uh, yes, they go after the first target they see, which happens to be Silas. Uh, they are not. No. They are not concerned about being focused on a particular target. 
Uh, and they swarm over Silas in an attempt to nibble at every extremity. Now it's rolling dice. So that's a 15 to hit. I know it doesn't show that because nope. for whatever reason. Does not 15, 15 misses? All right, perfect. All right, that is their go. The armor. The armor, or the uh, hollow one, is also not smart. Uh, but does see a better opponent and realizes that he can spread its work out, so it will attack Medric this time. Okay, 19 plus 4 is 23. I know it doesn't yeah. show up on yours that way. Um, it, it shows up at 7, uh, seven on, on my screen, and it's I, like, yeah, that doesn't hit. Oh, wait, it does. Yeah, no, I have no <laughs> idea why that's, yeah. Uh, it was a seven, yeah, seven, and it was a seventeen. I don't understand. Anyway, uh, seven bludgeoning damage. That part came out okay. Oh, no, wait, it didn't even show. All right. Uh, and once again, strikes. This time, an eighteen to hit does not hit you. Nope. Uh, this time, it kind of punches forward. You bring up the shield, and it kind of it hits the shield with a a fair amount of heft, uh, but doesn't actually do any damage to you. Uh, and it's going to stay put because it has something within easy reach. Uh, mechanical rat is gone. Ah, the bear. Bear's going to bear down ha, ha, ha. on the uh, on the creature there. Uh, I'm using the wrong set of stats for that one. Oh, a well, little stand. Uh, as once again it tries to chomp down on Fishman. Uh, Fifteen does not hit. I'm assuming. It's not even. Uh, no 15 does hit. 15 does hit? Okay. Yep. It's just enough. I roll... Okay. It's literally 2d6 plus 3. It rolled a d10. I have no idea what it's doing now. So I'm going to go and just type it in the chat. Roll. Roll 2d6 plus 3. I'm going to type it wrong. There we go. 8 <laughs> points of bludgeoning damage. Or, um... Piercing damage to the fish man. All right, this Great. one is at plus seven. Uh, 22 to hit. Again, I have no idea why they, how a 15 plus seven turned into 12. Well, I'll never know. Uh, this one is rolling the right dice. So that is 16 points of slashing damage as the claw rakes across it. Okay. All right. And it's staying where it's at. It doesn't need to move any further. Annie. I would like to try to untie Marigold. I'd like to try to use Vice because it's it's metal wiring to help like Okay. Um, it will be a strength based rather than dexterity based attempt to release him. Uh, okay. Because the wire is stiff, so it's not a matter of slipping him through. It's a matter of trying to pull it out. Uh, but you will get your, um, essentially, sleight of hand skill and bonus. Uh, so sleight of hand bonus with strength instead of dex. That's right. Okay, okay. Um, I'm going to manually roll that. Seven. Oh, yeah. Twenty-five. As you manage to kind of using using vice to kind of uh, lever it out a little bit and kind of unwind this this stiff stiff wire, uh, Marigold's kind of pulling at it. You got it. You got it. And then finally, you you uh, release his hands and he kind of rubs his his wrists. Ah, thank you. Are you injured? I'm fine. They look worse. He nods to you. And this is not rolling. Roll. There. Oh, 
He came up three times. All right. All the technology is running. Music. <laughs> Throw the table. Uh, <laughs> table flip. Wow. Table flip. That was Annie's turn. Um, and I am going to my second win and heal myself. Okay. Uh, Annie, you notice as, as he kind of pulls his arms back um, that there are there's a strange looking tattoo which seemed to run and spiral around his, his, uh, his uh, sort of elbow area. You, you quickly lose sight of it as mm-hmm. he as his sleeve kind of slides back into place, but where his hands were tied up a, above his head, uh, you could just make out the edge of that tattoo. Uh, and actually, I've got to make sure that's active. There we go. All right. Uh, that was Annie's go. Silas. And oh, yes. Move as well. Yep. Uh, I'm going to move to here. Uh, okay. And you can see from where you are, and as as you've kind of moved into the room, you can see there are multiple entrances. There's one up here, one over here, uh, and four of them down by the bottom, as well as the one you came in. And that reminds me, uh, chunder, 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 uh, and you see uh, kind of. Well, actually, you don't see it because you're not there anymore. But you do hear that uh, that uh, cleaning device or that, that rolling device kind of come up to this uh, point and then kind of roll back as it starts to uh, do its rounds once more. Um, and similarly, you hear them off in different directions, all moving away at this point. Uh, Silas, we're back to you. Well, Silas is going to uh, hex the Hollow Man. Okay. With his bonus action, he's going to hex Strength. And then he's going to try and whack him with uh, the staff. All right. I if that is a... uh, with uh, Booming Blade. All right. Nope, that is a miss. Yeah, unfortunately, it, it, it you kind of swing at the booming blade and you're distracted by the crawling mechanical rats or mice that are, are surrounding you at the moment. Oh, wait a minute. I can't hex him anyways. I think... No, I could... Uh, I'm trying to think of what the hex was last on. Yeah, no, that died. So, yeah, I could still hex him. But, yeah, I missed. So, next up is Roly Poly Fish Man. <laughs> okay. Uh, who does a claw for 15? 15 hits. Uh, and D 10 plus 7, 9 slashing damage. Nice. You hear the and sound of his claws scraping along the edges of the, of the metal bones. Uh, a second one for 16 to hit. That hits as well. And 11 slashing damage. Nice. Nice. Um, you see that it kind of reached in uh, and and grabbed some sort of gear-like device and yanked it out. The whole creature seems to judder and shake, but it's still moving. Oh. And uh, the fishman regains five hit points at the start of its turn. Nice. All right. And that and is done. That is Silas's go. Medric. You failed to gather the you. attention of the of the of the mice, but you have gathered the attention of the hollow man now. Well, the hollow guy is going to get smashed. Ha! Twenty-five to hit. I'm pretty sure that's a hit. That's definitely a hit. Warhammer proficiency. Okay. It takes ten damage. Nice. You put a very large dent. It now, because it's not a solid a solid thing. It's just sort of bending and twisting, but now it's at this weird sort of hunchbacked angle. And then bonus moving. action, shield smash, poof, right in its face. 20, not 20. Not 20. Yep, that definitely hits. Uh, so it's... Is it 1D, 1d6 plus 2 fire? Uh... 
So I'll just roll it. I'll just say 2d6 plus 2 fire. 7 damage total. All right. Uh, the shield roll kind of explodes bit. outward and the, the flames roll over it. You can see now that its internal structure is starting to buckle, but it's still standing. Barely, though. Uh, that's your action and bonus. You can move. No, I'm standing right here. Okay. The swarm. Crawling all over um, Silas at this point. Let's see what random thing it decides to show you, but uh, that was a nat 20, so 26. Um, yep. The swarm is not at half. So let's we'll see what these dice look like. So that's uh, six plus four plus additional six. That's 16 points of piercing damage. You feel them crawling okay. all over your, your coat and inside and up and around, and it's getting extraordinarily irritating. I got one point left. Oh, shit. Uh, I was supposed to take half damage from the shield, so it's like seven divided by two. That's Do I run it up or down? Always round down. Okay, so three in fire resistance, so I take one damage, okay. Yep. At this point, that's much. That's pretty much negligible. Uh, the armor in front of you, however, or the hollow man in front of you, is going to take a, a, a couple of swings. Let's see again what this random thing decides to show you. That is a 10 total. It showed me a 19, but I'm glad it's a 10. <laughs> <laughs> no idea why it's... I, I, I can't even. I can't even. All right. Uh, and on the second strike, that is a 13 total. So both strikes yes. miss. Tink, tink. Uh, Marigold sees that you are in danger. Silas, specifically. Silas is in danger, yes. Until next round. Um, well, he doesn't know what the future holds. All he knows is the moment. Uh, so... That sounds very sad. <laughs> what do you what do you mean? I thought he, he he knew everything. He does know everything, but he only knows it one second at a time. Um Hmm. How uh no. Annie already said that she wasn't really that hurt, right? I am literally at full health. Yeah. All right. My uh, cure wounds. Not my cure wounds, my thing. Right. Your your second wind or whatever it's called. Um, then uh, he reaches in towards uh, something underneath his shirt and extends his hand towards uh, towards Silas. Um, hmm, what would he say at this point? Huh. Um, Huzzah! <laughs> Just... uh, it's a weird build, so I kind of realized that I made it stranger than it needs to be. Uh, I'll roll it in the meantime and then tell you what the actual roll was. Uh, no, actually, that is the right roll. Uh, as he, he uh, extends his fingers and uh, kind of says, Shift your left shoulder. Just a little to the little up, a little down. You'll hear a crack. You'll be fine. And you feel the, the energy of it as you, as you comply, as you get 16 health back. It's his equivalent of healing word. Yeah. Uh, from where he is. Uh, and For a heck of a healing word. Uh, he's he's going to take a look around, so um, he's kind of staying where he we is. we got a bear here. Uh, the mecha bear. Again, I should have named it something else. Uh, we'll take a swike. A uh, swike. <laughs> swike. <laughs> I'm just combining words left and right. Uh, take a beak attack. That is a 23 to hit. No, tw 20, 23. I don't know. I must have typed something wrong. 23 to hit anyway. On to the fish man. Uh, again, it did deep tens. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, uh, Six points of slashing damage or piercing damage, uh, and then a swipe with the claw for twenty-four to hit. Okay. 
Okay, I don't know why it's showing you those weird numbers. Uh, for 15 slashing damage. Well, that's it. Fishman gone? He's gone. As you hear this nasty squelch as it crunches down. And now it's going to push its way through. Uh, that's difficult terrain. And then starts to move on down the hallway and kind of um, sort of barreling through uh, barreling. and not really paying much attention. Eh, it wasn't really intended, but sure. <laughs> uh, that's it for the round, so is it, though. So is, is Hollow Man under it now? Um, well, you knocked... Well, Hollow Man fell over, right? Uh, does the summoning go away? Uh... Probably. It probably disappeared. Okay. But it basically so just charged down the hallway. So Hollow Man's down? No. He's or, sorry. I thought you, I, I was thinking Fish Man. Uh, yeah. The, uh, no, just on the on the thing, the bear is kind of standing on top of Hollow Man. Yeah. Uh, it has range. No, it doesn't have range. Okay. So it is kind of squishing through. It hasn't knocked over Hollow Man. It's avoided him as much as it can. But that does mean it can't really move much further forward. It's kind of wedged in there between you and Hollow Man and the wall. Uncomfortable position, but probably make it harder for it to do anything. Uh, but Hollow Man is fine. You get the sense that they are aware of each other, that they are allies. Uh, Annie, as you see the, the, the front end of this mechanical bear stick its nose out of this hallway. I'm going to say... Uh, metric duck, and I'm going to shoot the bear. I will duck. duck bear. <laughs> the mechanical duck uh, comes much later. Oh god! I'm gonna use you steady aim duck. for this. Okay. A twenty-one. That definitely hits. So as its as its nose kind of peeks out, and you can see that the what little flesh had remained on it, or what little surface stuff had been scratched off by this other weird fish creature that you're not really aware of, uh, or where it came from. Uh, the arrow pierces through one eye, and yeah, I was pretty sure the Can damage I is going to be twenty. Damage. <laughs> Ooh, as shot. it it uh, uh, pierces through one eye, cr clatters around on the inside. Um, whenever I describe it as clattering around on the inside, that's an unrecoverable error, by the way. Uh, as it gets chewed up in the, in the mechanical works and the thing drops. And kind of just, just barely having made it into this. That was your action. Now, uh, bonus action was steady aim, movement was steady aim. Um, okay. Now, does that have any effect on the guy that he was squeezing with? Um, I'll say that it has to make a dexterity check or, or be knocked prone. Why not? Um, let's see what it tries to roll for me this time. Uh, 16. Apparently that part went through. Uh, so it's fine. It manages to avoid getting knocked over. It's just for sort now. of <laughs> lifts up one leg. The, the bear falls underneath it, just sort of props the leg back up. Captain Morgan. <laughs> yeah, it's Oh, no. No, you don't want it to go Captain Morgan or things are going to go really badly for you. <laughs> um, Silas, the bear seems to have stopped at your threshold, which is good. You've gotten a bit of assistance from Dr. Marigold, but the swarm is still passing over you. It's fine. Um, is the hollow man still standing? Yes. Yep. Barely. Then I'm going to smack him again. Okay. Because he's what I've got hexed. Oop, not 20. Natural 20. Hey. That's more than enough. Pretty so, sure yeah, that is 19 bludgeoning, 8 thunder, and <laughs> 7 necrotic. <laughs> As you jam the uh, the the, the uh, staff uh, into the, the center part of the hollow man, there's this boom, kind of explosion outward, and bits and pieces of it go flying. Medric, please make a dexterity saving throw. Fuck. That's a, a, a solid, a solid piece of the chest that you square in the forehead and kind of dazes you for a half second. Uh, otherwise, uh, no effect. Silas, uh, you've destroyed that, but Bonk. you still have movement mm. and uh, bonus action if you wish. 
Uh, I don't really have any bonus action attacks, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to move this so they can take it. their chance at their attack of opportunity. And they certainly will do so. I'll stop uh, there for the moment until we... That's a 19 to hit. Oof. No, even if with the shield, that would be too much, so I get hit. Okay. Whew, low damage. Uh, eight points of damage. And that is piercing damage, as they all <laughs> chew at your feet. Yep. And then I will stand over here. And, uh, oh, I suppose I've, uh, Bonus action, the last of the healing words. The ring is now dry. For five points. To yourself? Yes. Yep. I think I'm in worse shape than he is. As you stand near Marigold, he uh, he smiles grimly. I'm really glad to see you. All of you. Um. Likewise. Medric, the thing you were attacking has fallen in front of you, just like the other thing that has fallen in front and of you. And the rats will, the mice swarm will also fall in front and of the me. The swarm may ha! also follow that. Fox six. Smashy, smashy. 11. Uh, 11 does, uh, actually hits. Oh, wow. It's such a large swarm of things. So for damage, is it only for proficiency bonus, or also strength? For, for damage, it's just weapon? strength plus weapon. Yeah. Okay. Eight damage to the swarm. Okay. Uh, that looks like an eleven on here. Oh, I mean, I rolled in it. Yeah, eleven. Okay. I just can't add, I guess. <laughs> As you smash down this time, successfully crushing several of the small, uh, small mechanical mice. Hearing them splinter and and uh, and crack. And then shield smash. Do it again. <laughs> fourteen to hit. Uh, fourteen hits. Okay, six plus two. It takes four fire damage. Okay. Which means I take one. All right, you kind of blast out at some of them, and, and you see the the a number of them scatter and stop moving. Some of them still still crawling around. And that's that's me. Okay. How bad does the swarm look? Um, quite well reduced at this point. Good. As the swarm in front of you seems to stop and decide not to crawl, but instead little lights start appearing in amongst them as their eyes start to light up this eerie sort of greenish gray. Uh, as they fire a beam at you, collectively, it's like a whole bunch of little beams all, all triangulating. So it's like a Death Star, but mice. Uh, yeah, a Death Star <laughs> with mice. There you go. Uh, however, thirteen doesn't hit. As you nope. as you sort of feel the you feel the sort of cold beams as they as they kind of crawl over you. Some of them hitting and leaving a little bit of a wisp of 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 uh, almost uh, uh, what looks like a, a little puff of dust uh, or a little puff of smoke. Across your shield, but not otherwise uh, affecting you. Um, oh, he's dead. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, no. I did die. I forgot to mark the... Hollow Man is dead. Uh, Marigold. Marigold looks up at you. Are you still injured? Is it really bad? So, yes. All right. I only have a little bit of a little bit of inbuilt left. Maybe I can scrounge something around here. And he uh, he touches then your arm. Uh, if you only have a bit left, then heal Medric. As you wish. Uh, and he extends his hand towards Medric, kind of. And from this close up uh, for you, uh, Silas, you see him kind of looking at Medric, trying to almost evaluate him. Medric, step back on your left heel and pause for just a second. 
I'll As follow he the casts instructions. A healing word, and you regain eight points. Should have left my dead elf. <laughs> you regain eight points of health, and you Excellent. hear this sort of snap as your as your uh, your spine comes into alignment. Um, and you said eight points. Yes, eight points total. Uh, that thing is dead. Annie. Um, the swarm, right? Mm-hmm. Swarm seems to be the only thing remaining. Okay. Pull out one of my darts. And steady aim. The, the swarm with the darts. Swarm 25. with the darts. 25 is a definite hit. Perfect. To roll the base damage and then... I'm just going to take a look at what I want it to do. Um, advantage on its next attack. Well, it definitely has disadvantage on its next attack as all the mice go slack and, and uh, perish. Good. You have... It, it seems for the moment... <laughs> <laughs> with the it's like the mice just all lined up for a big strike, and at that moment, you just like skewered all of them with the it, dart. It's as much. It's as much about kind of it, uh, the dart kind of piercing one of them, which then smashes into another one, and little little thorns and extensions uh, start appearing out of the dart. So it tries to restrain it, but ends up sort of clumping them into a small ball and then crushing the ball, which falls to the the the, the floor. Um, it seems for the moment. There are no other aggressors. However, you do still hear sounds from uh, each of the tunnels. Some of them kind of rhythmically climbing closer and then further away. Some of them seeming to you know, be much further. Well, it's my my turn, so... Marigold seems a bit distraught. I'm glad you're here. Where did they that take her? Madman. I don't know. Uh, he he bound us and, and bound my eyes as I was coming in. I don't even know where I am or where this place is. But if he harms one hair on her head, well, whatever Did friendship existed which... between us will no longer be. Did you see which way they went? He he gestures over to what on the map is the far right lower passageway. I saw him go through there. Ah. Are you are you up for this? Oh, I'm sure that choice, we? wasn't the last of his tricks. I can take a moment or two, and he kind of looks over towards the tubs. I can do something with this if I find a bit more. He must have more supplies around here. I do not wish to take too much time, though. What do you suggest? Looking to the three of you for this. We should keep going. We need. What would you be doing? Would it be healing magic or destructive magic? I'm okay with either one, just saying. I mean, given a few minutes, I might be able to scrounge up either. But I wouldn't have time for both. If we have I, I think that it, I think that as much as it is a pressing matter, it's and get a bit of healing because there's, yes, it would. we're not going to be able to help her if we're dead. I don't have any of my. That is my speech. I don't have any of my goods with you. If any of you have bottles or vials or anything I can use, or I, I can start searching for some, but it will take I time. do have vials, actually. You know those, um, those bottles I filled with, like, nails and liquor that, that I was going to use as Molotov cocktails? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to, like, pour... The... What? 
Where have you been keeping them all this time? In my backpack the entire time. <laughs> so you go and look in your backpack, and given the number of combats and other crazy things you've been through, <laughs> uh, how many of them did you have, first of all? Uh, that's going to require a paperwork check. Or I'm going to pick a number. It wasn't that many, as I recall. Roll me a d4. Yeah, I think it was like three. You're muted. You're muted. How the hell would I mute myself? Mm. Like, I, I was talking and then it muted. Anyway. D4 is... Three, three. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. I made these when. And roll me a d six. Wouldn't it be better to use them? A anyway. Oh wait, that was two. That, 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 there was there was a plus one. So that, that's two bottles and three on the d six. Okay, so you have one that's unbroken. As you look into your backpack and realize that these have been jostled around so often, that uh, they've leaked into the bottom of your bag. Oops. Uh, so now you have broken glass and loose oil and a whole bunch of other things in the bottom of your backpack. I'll just kind of like empty that off in the corner. And hey, there's a <laughs> clink, clink, Graveler clink. in my backpack that I forgot about. Oops. We might want to use him on the next fight. Falls yeah, and we'll... rolls, rolls aside. Um... I'll pick him up and put him back in the backpack. Okay. Actually, no, I'll carry him under my arm. Uh, if you carry him under your arm, you'll either be able to use your shield or your weapon, but not both. Yeah, that's fine. I'll just activate him as soon as okay. we're closer. Um, because he can't move that fast. Although, wait. He's got that ground movement. I don't think he can move through Chitin, though. Okay. Um, Marigold takes uh -oh. the... Marigold takes the, the bottle from you, uh, takes a sniff. Oh, interesting. Um, kind of st sticks his finger around the edge, takes a, takes a taste of it. That'll do nicely. Uh, and dips it into one of the glass barrels that are in front of you. There, I can mix this up as we go. But I only have essentially two doses. Um, healing or explosion? How big of an explosion are we talking about here? Uh, with this and without much time to refine it, not huge. It won't be much for healing either, but it will yeah, help. Might as well go with the healing. And I'll cast uh, Cure Wounds level 1 on myself. Okay. So are you taking a few minutes to, to recover, or...? Um... You hear I mean, if we got to wait for him for a couple of minutes, then... You see, hear the sound, uh, Silas, of one of those uh, large things approaching. It ends at kind of the hallway can. where it got narrow, and then immediately starts to move back. It seems as though they don't travel as well or as quickly through some of the narrow passageways. Yeah, Silas is just going to move over and keep an eye on the on the hallway that they went down. Hey, Marigold, what are, the, what are, what are these uh, orbs that are going through the tunnels? And is there, do you know if there's a way to stop them? Um, make I'll an insight check. Okay. Insight. Uh, four. Four. As he's kind of mixing a few things together, uh, he takes a corner of one of his shirts and rips off the corner and puts it into the bottle he's mixing with. And you see the bottle start to shift into a sort of pale pink color. 19 for insight. Um, he looks up when you ask the question, I've never been here, but if I had to hazard a guess, I'd say therefore keeping the passageways clean or clear. There's enough acid and other things flowing around here that uh, there are many creatures which would thrive on the, on the residue. So they have to constantly be in more in service, and they also probably tend to keep any other uh, unwanted visitors out too. 
on the inside check on the inside check you he's he sounds like he's speculating the words he's using are all speculative but there's more knowledge behind it it feels like he does know a lot more and he's trying to sound like he knows less okay and silas you get nine hit points also oh thank you Once again, you hear, you hear the sound of these things kind of uh, moving through. In fact, just see the edge of one of them over on the far right-hand side as it uh, kind of reaches to the end of that particular column and then stops, seems to move around, seems to be heading back. All right, we should go after them. Once you're done make, making your potion. Uh, that's as good as it's ever going to get. Remind me to sew more more pieces into my shirts. Uh, we've only got a few minutes left. Okay. What we will do then is we will take a brief pause back in about five minutes. And here we are again, having rescued Dr. Marigold and now beginning the trek to move forward and uh, perhaps find out the fate of one Sandy Bell. And preferably not getting road killed by these gross orbs. I mean, generally not being road killed is one of the things I, I have in a day's, you know, agenda. Mm hmm um, you can see that off to the right-hand side uh, of this particular chamber does seem to be a squared-off hallway, which leads into, um, well, you can't really see much from there, a dim room in which there are shelves and other things that seem to be a, 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 a gathered in. It does look like an artificial extension of this. Uh, but once again, you hear the sort of chun-chun-chun of the things moving around. And you look forward towards the hallway you're about to head down. Um, looks like Silas is in the lead at the moment. Uh, but I'll have uh, I'm each. Fine with this. I'm also okay with this. Although, if you want me to be in the lead, just let me know. Sure. I mean, I can. Uh, I might as well be first. Okay. I can see a bit farther. All right. Well, make a perception check. Actually, all three of you make a perception check as you start to head down that hallway. I have one for Dr. Marigold as well. Why not? Nine total. <clears throat> if I can get it to roll. Yeah, he's pretty good. Oh, it rolled once already. Driving me nuts. Okay. So rolling bad perception rolls. Yeah, you got the highest. Nice. And I got the highest modifier, but I rolled the lowest. Yay. Okay. Well, uh, uh, in any year, the first to kind of notice as uh, as Silas starts striding down and, and Nax is, sorry, not Nax, <laughs> Medric. <laughs> Man, I used to be so good at getting the names right for so long. As Medric is walking along, kind of oblivious, uh, their feet. Oh, that, that was that, that was like 100% a Nax perception check. <laughs> uh, and you notice as as uh, Medric's feet step down into this tunnel, there's a little sizzling sound every time uh, Medric takes a step. Uh, and you notice that the, the walls and ceiling and floor of this particular tunnel do not have the ragged uh, shapes that were left behind by those large... Uh, cleaning devices, as Marigold described them. Um, instead, there's a sort of thin layer of slime. And as you move in further, um, the slime gets thicker, and that opening you see in front of you, Silas, um, the ground is covered with this sort of grayish slime. It starts to smell really, really bad. Um, I hate oh. to say it, but mm. are we in another stomach? Maybe. Can we hmm. see footprints like in the slime or? No, the slime surface, in fact, seems to be smooth. Uh, although on the far side um, of, the, of that space, just inside the hallway, 
Um, Silas, you do make out what looks to be uh, a mechanical pile just on the edge of the slime, um, moving somewhat slightly and letting out a sort of uh, pitiful uh, mechanical wail. Malfunction, malfunction, malfunction. You hear it's a voice from that direction. Can I see what it is? It looks to be. Is some... it dark enough for me to see what it is? <laughs> <laughs> it is dark enough for you to see. Uh, although, ironically, it gives off a small amount of light, uh, a little bit of internal glow, um, which gets buried and re resurfaces from time to time. It looks to be some sort of. Um, Similar to that first mechanical being you saw out in uh, the warehouse, uh, it seems to be spindly legged, but this time sort of a roundish um, body. Uh, or actually, no, this one is squarish body, much like that one. But you can see that it, it's uh, it's struggling to make its way up out of the slime uh, and sliding all the time. Uh, in fact, uh, you can kind of make out the the fact that it's it's joints seem to be failing as it's trying to move up. It seems to be losing some strength in there. Uh, it just keeps repeating. Malfunction. Malfunction. Assistance needed. Malfunction. Uh, I'm going to see if I can reach it, but watch out. This stuff seems to be really slippery. So Silas will move at half speed. To take it very carefully. Okay. As you enter towards the center of the room, you realize that the room is sloped downward, and this pool is much deeper than you might have expected. Are we... You also feel sort of tingly around your feet and legs as they start to become overwhelmed by this ooze. What are you wearing uh, on your feet and legs? Boots. Okay. Hiking type boots. All right. You feel this stuff sort of seeping through and starting to irritate your skin. Uh-oh. Uh, Marigold, are you sure they came this way? You kind of push this up a little bit. Uh, he definitely came this way, but that stuff... That stuff looks like acid to me. We might have to yeah. find another way around. And this looks like a trap. Back up. The words are coming less frequently now from the creature mm -hmm. as it sort of seems to be slowly shifting and falling apart. Make a perception yeah. check. Yeah. Sadly, I don't think I've got anything that can help it. Uh, nine. Okay. Uh, I kind of want to just put it out of its misery. Yeah. I don't have any way of bringing uh, it here. here. Yeah, like the... Yeah, there's like a thing down here. Does a 20 hit for uh, Silas? Mm. Yep. A large lump of the slime thrusts out towards you, uh, punching you for five bludgeoning damage and six acid. That's going to slurps over you. You now realize that there is something living in this stuff. Yep. Okay, the ooze is alive. All right, let's go some other way. <laughs> Silas is going to slam it with a booming blade before he leaves. Okay. Uh, make the roll at disadvantage, because you can't really tell it from anything else. Uh, I'm just planning on slamming it into the floor at my feet. Okay. Is that a, a an area attack or a no, direct attack? No, this is okay. a single target thing. Okay. Uh, I got that, a fifteen. The the the, lowest. the uh the boom seems to stir up some of the uh, the ooze around you. Uh -oh. 
uh, and seems to have some some effect. So that was Ooh, nine bludgeoning and three thunder. Well, yeah, I don't know how we're going to get through there without fire. So fire. Fire would probably do it. It's probably flammable. Might be a bit more backdraft than you're expecting. All right, let's do oh, this. Maybe. Uh, I I go this way. <laughs> um. Wrong button. Produce. Right. Uh, I'll wait until Marigold leaves. Like it's behind me. All right. And I will cast produce flame on the slime. Okay. What's their range on Produce Flame? Uh, I forget. That creature is no longer making any sounds and seems to. The flickering flame appears in your hand, so it's in my hand. But okay, I think you can throw it as an action. Yeah. Okay. One give D8 it a toss. Fire. One D. Uh, well, give it a, a attack roll first. Although it's a large enough target, you can kind of toss it. Yeah, over. if I can't hit the floor, like that's pretty sad. I mean, sixteen. Do I hit the floor? I've 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 had problems hitting the floor before, so. Um, <laughs> I figured I might too because that's how I roll. <laughs> so yeah, you kind of wa walk in a little bit and the produce the flame in your hand and then toss it into the room, and it goes in and there's this intent anticipation and then it kind of. Is absorbed by the room. No effect. I'll Maybe not flammable gold. then. Do I need a bigger flame? No, yeah. I don't. Everything's flammable with a big enough <laughs> fire. <laughs> um, maybe not. I'm sure he went that way, but uh... maybe there's a way to go around this way. And I'll point to the hallway towards the east. Okay, you can walk down there if you want. Are my friends following me? <laughs> I'll very cautiously walk that way. Marigold's kind of standing at the edge of this and kind of looking down, and you see him kind of run his finger along where some of the, the slime edge has uh, has hit, uh, and he kind of sniffs it, and then he kind of shakes his hand. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Ah, not flammable. It's just some closet. As you step something. into that room, I haven't fully dressed out the space because okay. there's only so much time to build maps in the lifetime um but the the room is is a a uh what looks like a study of some kind or would be if it was less uh, uh chaotic there are um bits and pieces of mechanical uh parts mostly small uh there are vats of different uh what looks like pickled animals there's a, a couple of pickled mice. There's a pickled snake. You see a pickled uh, 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 kind of a baby uh, owl bear that's uh, in one of the jars. Pickle anything. Yeah, you know, if you get in a big enough glass, you can pickle anything. Um, and there are diagrams that are on the, on a, a big work table that look to be kind of comparative anatomy, if you will, of different <laughs> animals. And then sort of another one, which is a mechanical replacement of different bits and pieces. Um, you get the, the 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 idea that this might be a, a design workshop. Okay, Marigold, you might want to have like a look to... at this. It looks mag or sciency animal. I don't know. You just come by and look at it. Hmm. He seems a little slow to come in, as if he's still thinking about the hallway. But um, are you all entering the room or just standing in the hall? <laughs> I'll enter the room. Yeah. <laughs> Um, are you going to take time to look through the room or just take the glance in? I'll just have Marigold take a glance in because, like, if there's anything useful in here, he'll be able to find it. Or Annie or Silas, just not me. <laughs> well, he's he's uh, he's looking around, and uh, all of you who might be seeing Marigold can make an insight check. You can decide whether you're taking a look and watching him or looking around the room. I'm watching him. 27 insight. Okay. Silas is going to be looking around the room. Okay. Silas can make an investigation check then. No. Oops. Um, okay. As you start to poke around the room. Um, once again, hey, once again, Medrick, you, you kind of notice there's a sense of familiarity as he's looking around the room. There's also a sense of sadness 
um, as he kind of uh, pokes through some of the diagrams and flips some of the papers back and forth and um, kind of nods his head knowingly. Um, out loud, though, all he says is, I might be able to use some of these jars, but the rest of this, I, I don't know. Um, for you, Silas, you start to look around the room, and you realize there are a number of of devices that are half-built and small, um, what look like uh, uh, things that have been attached together but aren't quite completed. You have a feeling there might be more here if you take the time to look. But this was definitely a place where someone was building a bunch of things. Some of them small, some of them maybe animal-shaped, or some of them more meant to be worn. Hmm. Do I see a convenient pouch of rubies he was using for rat eyes? <laughs> uh, you have a feeling that this might be a place you could find such a thing if you take the time to look. Hmm. Uh, Silas says, I want to come back here and check this after we've found Sandy, even though I realize it's probably not going to happen. Uh, the Good coming point. back part, not the finding Sandy part. Um, so yeah, if we can, I'm coming back here. I think there's interesting stuff here, but I don't know how long we can leave him alone with Sandy. So we have to walk through the slime, basically. How, how about how's that going to work? I have Unless. a thought on this, actually. Could we build, like, slime-proof shoes in here? Marigold, can you do this? Um, well, <laughs> I've never built something like that. In time, I'm sure I could devise something to resist the, the acid, but I, I have something else in mind. All right. It's going to need your help. I'm not strong enough to pull this off. Okay, I'll do He walks back out to the other room and points at the vats, of, uh, the glass vats that are there. The substance that's coming out, uh, at first I thought to be somewhat bitter, not exactly acidic, more of a base, I think. It's meant to flow out through those passageways, I think, and, and well, hasn't. It's been collected here. But if you're able to move these vats, we well, might be able to flush out a part of it. All Aside right. from that, uh, finding some faster way to move through or uh, avoid being disrupted along the way would be the only thing I could think of, if we're going that way. I don't know where the other passengers lead, so I have I have no idea if they're any better. What about that one to the south? And I'll check this one out. Well, they're all to the south, or four of them are to the south, but... The middle south. <laughs> um, you look down that one, and the, the walls and ceiling are similarly smooth, uh, and you again see some some grayish uh, sort of uh, liquid floating down. You kind of see the edge of it right about uh, right about the edge of your vision, really. Yeah. If anybody wants to check that out while I move the vats, feel free. Otherwise, I'll move a vat and spill it over where Do Marigold said. Okay. okay. Uh, Silas will cautiously take a look, staying away from any gray oozes. Okay. Um, Silas can make a perception check. Medric, um, Marigold is trying to tell you how to move this, but it's clear this is beyond his domain of expertise. Moving heavy things is not apparently something he does. <laughs> um, but he does suggest that um, it's going to be very, very heavy, and judging from the shape of it, it's going to have a tendency to tip over, so please... Be very careful. I don't think this will hurt you too much if you happen to get splashed by it, but I wouldn't want to test that just yet. I'd rather have a full kit here to do that. I might be able to scram something up in the other room if we've got time, but I'm afraid we might not. So I'll move it, and yeah, I'll just be very careful as I move it. Okay, it's a strength check at disadvantage. Oh. Uh, it is very, very heavy. Um, Silas, as you look down, you can see, uh, uh, kind of now having a sense of what to look for, you see little ripples moving within the ooze at the edge of your vision. There's definitely so something living there again as well. So that's an eight. All right. Dexterity saving throw then. One. Yeah. 
As you pull on this particular Fuck. tub, it topples over in place. You can see that it's got this, these wooden blocks which are holding it up, but it itself is a roundish vessel. Uh, and as you pull on it, it tips over and splashes towards you. Uh, you do take uh, five points of effectively lightning damage. As you see, it kind of spill out. That first, or that one you're standing in front of has not enough left in it. There are two more. What about the second one? As all of you hear this kind of happen. Does it spill like That's... towards where it needs to go or no? It basically just makes a, a puddle right there. And you notice that the room is slightly concave as if it's meant to accumulate a certain amount. Crap. Um, uh, anybody want to give me a hand with this? I go pointing at the second one. Did you say I saw ripples moving? Yes, you just saw. Okay. You saw definitely something in this. Probably something similar to what you saw in the previous one. Yeah, I'm gonna tell him. Yeah, there's something like that in there, and then I'm gonna go stand in that puddle and hope it stops the tinglys in my feet. <laughs> As you walk through the puddle, so you do find it. it sort of foaming up a little bit around your boots. And then the foam kind of turns almost rigid and solid, almost like ash. But the tingling stops. Make a get uh, the heck out of that pool. Make a Constitution saving throw. No, not Constitution. Yeah, actually, it is Constitution in this way. In this case, it's my shittiest save. Oof. Five. Uh, you do take, oof, six points of lightning damage from the substance itself as it seeps into your boots. Okay, Silas is going to go take a rest. He said, I hate to do this, but I don't think I can go any further without one. You're not looking good. Can I help you? Maybe. I don't know. I don't, I don't have any magic left. I'm barely standing. I think I'm just going to sit here for a bit. I'll cast a level four cure wounds on Silas. Dang. You still get level four slots? I have one level four slot. <laughs> well, actually, uh, uh, Marigold intercedes. Wait, uh, wait. you're going to need your strength. Let's try this out. And he's kind of swirling the bottle that he's had of the ores that he's mixed with some of this substance, in fact. This is going to taste terrible, but I think it'll do what you need. If you're willing to try. I'll try anything once. Right. You can ask them. <laughs> Drink no more than half. I, I, I mean, can't make any more, I don't think. And, and I'll point out that it tastes a lot, and I know you can change the smell of things. You can really taste the taste of things, too. That's going <laughs> to oh, yeah. suck. <laughs> well, as you drink it down, please make a constitution saving throw for me. All right. Uh, it, it is nails. It is well. Mm. There is I a distinct the nails extra. Out. There is it's well free iron. The the you dump the nails out, but there is residue of nail and whatever gasoline or whatever you're using as accelerant, uh, as well as whatever else he's added in. There's a floral note which surprises uh, you, Silas. Uh, it's probably the one redeeming factor as you also feel this sort of pepto bismol sizzle of whatever <laughs> this other substance is. Uh, and you kind of involuntarily cough. There's a little little puff of black smoke with little bits of lightning that flap flap out of it at the same time. Your tongue goes flying out, which Marigold seems a bit surprised by. Uh, but you do regain... Uh... I'm going to re-roll that because that was terrible. Hey! <laughs> That's just way one, too one, one, two. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. That's more like it. 18 points mm. of... Uh, 18 hit points back. Because I'm not allowing that to be that bad a roll on that that kind of a thing. Uh, so, how do you feel? I feel like I just drank a Buckley's. Uh, tastes terrible, but it works. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume I didn't use that level 4 spell? <laughs> you did not. You did not. Okay. He stopped you before you used it. Um, you stay focused I, on You still could if you wanted to. But, save that uh, for later. <laughs> Yeah, you might need to blast something real good. Speaking I saw which, more uh, bottles in the in the other room. I'll see if I can conjure up a few more. They're not going to be quite as effective because I've 
Well, only got so many corners left on my shirt. And he doesn't explain and just kind of moves on. Moves back into the other room. You can hear him rummaging around in there. Um, As he does that, can I ask for help to move the second barrel? Or second that? Or I mean, who are you asking? Silas can try to help. Either Annie or Silas. Anybody who is not Marigold. Because he's... We're equally, we're equally strength in... Capable. I mean, I have a one. Well, you're stronger than me, then. Or I'll, I'll ask somebody to, like, give me directions as I, like, heave on the barrel. <laughs> I mean, that's something that Annie could do. I, I'm, I'm sure it would be... It's one of those hilarious moments of... Uh, I can't actually do this, but I'll tell you... Okay, no, put your hand there. Put your leg there. Lean this way. The puddle's that of, way. Go around it. Yeah. I will hurt myself if I try. <laughs> I, I think that Annie is sort of royal splaining this to you. All right. <laughs> um, so it gives you advantage, which cancels cancels out the disadvantage because this is such an unwieldy thing. All right. So just a straight up stretches and pick up the barrel. Twenty two total. All <laughs> right. You're able to start moving the barrel very, very carefully over. Um, where are you intending it to be? Do you want it to be in the same original tunnel you were looking at? The one yeah. that uh, that Silas scouted out? There still are two other tunnels. The one where the eyeball is, because that's where dude went. Yep. yep. You're dragging it over towards that direction. Yep. Mar Marigold comes back out, and he's got... Uh, actually, Marigold doesn't come back right, right, right away. Um, but you drag it over there. Uh, to the uh, the entrance of that tunnel. Mm -hmm. um, after a, a short period of time, uh, Marigold does come back out. Um, he's got uh, he's carrying a book under one arm as well as a, a sort of a handful, a, a small wooden crate. Uh, you can almost imagine it if you are uh, if you've ever seen one. Uh, it's like a, a crate for uh, growlers. This is essentially what he's got. <laughs> Nice. Uh, and with uh, six uh, six largest brown bottles on there. Ah, good, you've got it mixed. Or you've got it moved. And he goes over to the other one that's still there and starts to fill these jugs about halfway with this substance. Um, and then he uh, kind of uh, pulls up on one sleeve, and you can see the, it's the right-hand sleeve, uh, and you'd sort of noticed this before, as he kind of takes the sleeve and rips it off just slightly above the elbow, and you can see this this uh, this twisting tattoo, which is formed around his arm. Uh, make a history check for me, as he takes that sleeve and starts to rip it into small chunks, throwing a chunk into each of these uh, six bottles. Probably what's, not. What's up with your shirt? Uh, it's it's an old I'm gonna, trick. I'm going to use that. <laughs> going to use that? Sorry. I am curious. I'm going to. I'm using my inspiration. Okay hanging around um i'm curious oh my god oh it's on the tip of your mind <laughs> but you just can't place it you have a feeling if you have a chance to research it or if you look back through your notes or there's a moment of calm you might have a better idea of what it was or, or what it is or what it reminds you of but nothing at the moment is coming to you in response to your question uh medrick uh he sort of uh, chuckles old alchemist trick we're frequently caught uh, in the field doing all sorts of things, so one of the best trained things I've ever learned was to soak a bit of your shirt in some of the drier parts of your solutions, and then you just have to add a little bit of the liquid elements to reformulate. It works. It does tend to ruin a lot of shirts, though, but... Uh, Could you use my cloak? Maybe? <laughs> I mean, unless you've soaked it in something useful, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, I suppose. I might have spilled booze on it a few times, but that's it. Well, if there's still any booze left in it, then maybe we can use that. But I'm afraid it's something that uh, well, I've managed to to keep on me. Frankly, I'd forgotten about it. But these, and he kind of holds up the, 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 the basket full of six of these, plus he's got the one half bottle left. These will help a bit in a pinch. It's about all I can offer at the moment. I've got a little bit of, of magic left in me, but Excellent. I want to save that, I think, as much as I can. So uh, do I just pour this down the hallway 
Or should I drag the vat a little deeper in? The closer you can get, the better. If it has to hit that central part. This is only a small amount. Normally, a room like this would probably be nearly full. Uh, and then there would be gates normally across these doorways or, or uh, you know, some sort of orifice to mechanically separate these things. At least I imagine so. All right, well, I'll request Annie's directions to get me to that, nearer to that room. <laughs> Annie, how could you tell me where I'm going? I can't see anything if I'm focusing on this. <laughs> What what I see is like the the like shimmy of like is he, is he, is he. take one step to the left no, no a little too far back to the right forward two steps Silas. okay Silas will help him down the tunnel yeah so ideally I'd like to like dump it like right right here yeah okay um so once again uh, make a uh, well, first of all, let's have Annie and uh, Silas both make appropriate roles. It sounds like perception is one of those roles. I could see uh, athletic, athletics or acrobatics as another one of those roles. Uh, if you want to substitute in intelligence instead of dexterity or strength, I would accept that. I'll cast or guidance wisdom. on myself, too. You can. Before I do that. Silas is just trying to assist him. Okay. So that just gets rid, of advantage. The, that, that gets rid of the disadvantage. Something more dexterous, more... How it's lifting it. Okay. Um, if that would work. Sure. I caught enough of those words to say, sure. Something more dexterous than just lifting it. It's about what I heard. Like, I know as, as somebody who can't lift stuff, I don't lift stuff. I kind of, like, roll stuff on the side and, like, shimmy it where it needs to go versus straight up lift it. That works. And these vats are round, so surprisingly shimmy strong. Works. Yeah. 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 Um, so, so could I use... My brain is saying... For I'd say acrobatics because it's a bit chunkier than something that's sleight of arm. <laughs> sleight of arm. <laughs> that's it is more of acrobatics advice. And so basically at this point, uh, it's not going to be giving advantage, but it will lower the DC. Cool. Try to get this to go where you want it to. Your foot. All right. I'll try not to let it fall on my foot, but maybe it can rest on my foot. Probably. Yeah. We'll see. Okay. We'll Did see the you roll. use the side of your right, foot? So strength roll, check. Roll it on the side of your ah! foot. <laughs> 24 plus. That, that should be a one. So 25. 25. All right. It feels like it's kind of slipping. You feel like your, your feet are getting a little bit caught up in whatever this muck is. Um, but you are able to tip it forward and pour it out. And essentially what you've done is you create a channel in the middle, which gets cleared out of this stuff. And as it hits down towards the bottom, it actually reveals the, the uh, leftover uh, semi-melted form of that poor, uh, that poor machine that was caught up in this. You can already see, though, as you're standing there, that the ooze is crawling back towards the center. All right. You've go, gained go, go, yourself go, go, the time. Go, go, go. <laughs> All right. Straight line. You got this. Dash. Mary Gold. Get so, with it. Uh, one, it is uh, Silas. Two, Annie. Three, Medric. Four, uh, Marigold. Uh, that would be Medric. Damn it. As you're charging on through, and it takes a swipe at you. That is a 19 to hit. Yep regardless of whatever you're seeing there, because I don't know why. Uh, let's see. That is five points of bludgeoning damage as a mm -hmm. pseudopod erupts out of the side of the thing and six points of acid damage from the other side. Um, Marigold did make it through, right? Uh, Marigold is going to be struck. Fuck. Uh, that is only an eight to hit, which does not hit him. 
Um, although it's closer than you might expect, uh, as he managed to, to run on through. And all of you emerge on the other side. Um, you can hear the chunder, chunder, chunder sound of the uh, cleaning, however, coming in your direction as it sort of round, rounds the corner right on the edge. Like, I can't make um, it through that small opening. You yep. do see marks on the floor in front of you, so it may. You also see there's a small alcove that seems to be off to one side. So this is going to try the alcove. Woohoo! Okay. What are, the rest of you going to what are the rest of you going to do? Um, I'd say maybe pull back. Well, I'm, I'm not pulling back into use. Yeah, no, but you can pull back like a couple of feet or something. Yeah, as you, okay. as you all run run by and Marigold kind of like, wait, where are we? Oh, no. Uh, as the thing comes around and the corner. Marigold. Uh, and you see it turn sideways to shimmy through oh, this small <laughs> area. Oh, shit. Uh, and come into this spot. But then seems to stop and turn around and come back. Um, it will be a, d a dexterity saving throw for uh, Silas, but you do have advantage. Oh wow! Oh, wow! Eight. All right. Uh huh. It went through, so I stepped out. <laughs> um, it can't do that much from there, though. It at one point of piercing damage as it hey. passes on through by you, and you hear it moving down and away away from you. So this will pop back out. We should move quick. <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay. You continue to move ahead. And I'm going to have Marigold go in front of, between me and Medric. Okay. Hey, it's a dead end. What the fuck? Um, it's another one of the... Uh, let me make sure I switch to the right view. I can see. Uh, you see there's another one of those orifices there. The ones that uh, opened when it came through. And you also, again, note that there are small, um, what look like three-pointed uh, 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 circles, or three circles with three holes in them on each of the sides. Silas is going to run back to where the dying robo thing was and see if there's an arm there that's not covered in ooze again yet. Okay. In the meantime... Mary Gold, can you open this? Uh, Marigold starts to walk forward, and you can hear the, the loud sound of the cleaner on the other side. The door opens. Back up, back up, back up. And that'll be a dexterity saving throw, I'm assuming, from each of you as you try to try to get out of the way. It's faster than you are. It moves at 60. Uh, so it actually ends up there There's by that 18. point. Ah. Jumped in the corner. Okay. Uh, you do have advantage on the roll then, uh, Annie. Uh, okay. Marigold, I think I put him outside the wall for a moment there. I'll have to fix that. Uh, dexterity is not his strength. Oh, oh, wow. that's that's pretty good. It's a nineteen uh, plus, uh, and that's only ten, so it's a fail from you. Uh, okay. I realize this is inconsistent because I don't have the rules in front of me, but I have to make a, a on-the-moment remembrance or creation of this. So it doesn't look quite the same, but uh, Marigold and Medric uh, both take two points, and he takes four points. You had a better chance of not taking any damage, but unfortunately you still kind of had your arm out at the wrong time, and it kind of crunched down in your arm. As it comes all the way through, and then you reach, see it reach this point again, and you know it's coming back. What are you going to do? As uh, you've reached that point, Silas, where you see, yes, there is indeed uh, a couple of limbs that you can reach in and grab. By now, the hallway that you had cleared out has refilled with ooze. But this Silas, is just on the up. edge of it. Yep, I just grab an arm and I'm racing. Whoa, there's a ball there. Indeed. Um, so... Annie, you're going to stay where you are? Or are you going to I am. Okay. To stay where I am, and I threw that, that door, so I'm going to the ball as it, as it goes by. 
Yeah, same. And I'll, I, I'm going to remember like the path the ball took when it first came through here. So it's like, okay, so it didn't touch that particular spot. So I'll go in that spot and like hug the wall and I'll Marigold, get on my shoulders. Okay. <laughs> All right. That'll tie his fate to yours. So whatever you roll will affect both of you. Uh, and the and, and indeed, it does move back through again. I'm just going to make my... Do I have advantage speed. for knowing where to stand? Uh, sure. I'll give you advantage. So similar to having an alcove in this particular space, because this is a larger space, you had a feeling if this was any more narrow, there would be no place to stand. 15, I'm uh, glad I had advantage. <laughs> okay. And uh, Annie has advantage again. Hey. Oh, there you go. Uh, so you succeeded in there. So this is for Marigold and Medric. You take half 15, damage, yeah. so three each. And Annie takes half of this, which is one. So again, kind of catches you. There's almost no space to avoid this entirely. Uh, but then it moves through uh. the the area and continues blowing down. I'll follow it. Yep. Okay. Mary Gold is still on my shoulders. It closes very, very quickly. And you remember that it was very, very dangerous because it closes so quickly. So, it's going to come down to who's got the highest uh, uh, well, everybody's at the same yep. speed. Uh, so. I would be slightly faster because I can dash. Okay. So it is coming down to a dexterity saving throw. You do remember that it closed very quickly and was very, very solid when it closed. This is this is me being nice saying this is a very risky move. It worked for you before, and you might make it through unscathed or not. But how else can we proceed, though? Like, uh, and oh, Silas wait. is running up behind you with this, this, this robot arm in yeah. hand. Uh, Silas, even dashing, can't quite make it to the door, so he won't actually be able to try to get through. Okay. But he'll try yeah. to use the arm. Yeah. Don't want to split the party either. Yeah. So you're not dashing through? I'll, dash I'll notice through. how far behind Silas is, and it's like, damn it, Silas. <laughs> Wait, what do you have there? The person going, damn it, why did you get you jump in the hole? I'm not going to jump in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you pause there and kind of let Silas catch up again. Uh, you do hear it uh, come to a halt and start its climb back up towards you. The threshold opens, and you can see that it comes right to the edge of where you are. What would you like to do? Is there anything I can grab onto on the ceiling? It's all basically the same material. Oh. And you can see there are pits booming. on the ceiling. All right. I'll just put my shield up and brace it's for It's a little impact. bit crammed there, but I, I would assume you can kind of shove by or move him out of the way. So it's just yells, cover your ears. I'm pushing oh. myself in, into a corner. Uh, 17, unfortunately, does not harm it. It's not hard enough to, to uh, harm it to find that, uh, that spot. So it okay. kind of bounces off its surface. Anyone else going to try something? Before it rolls I... on through. Hammer. <laughs> yeah, Silas is only other thing is going to put the shield up in front of him. I hit it for I... 18 to hit. 18 does hit. Throwing a dart? Okay, you can certainly try to throw a dart. It takes 11 damage. Okay. It does seem to take some damage. You hear it kind of go king, but it seems to be still in motion. That's a Can definite I hit. Um, nice. I don't, uh, I don't know as you throw the dart, enough. kind of following just where where uh, Medric had made a bit of an incision. The dart kind of goes in, and kind of similar to before, you hear that ching kong kong ching kong as the machine kind of tears itself from in, in, uh, apart from inside. It now fills the chamber, mm -hmm. but it's no longer moving. 
Uh, can we can we go over it? It now fills the chamber. Well, if we were able to to not be run over by it before, there's got to be some clearance between it that we can try to squeeze through. You can try crawling through it. It's basically Im exploded a little bit, so it's it's kind of filling a lot more. But you can certainly try. Who's first? Uh, Mary Gold. Any ideas? Um, I'm afraid these kinds of traps are never my strength. But any ideas? Uh, what's the best way to clear it out? Uh, clear it out of our, to clear it out of our, of our way. I mean, uh, aside from finding something to melt it or blow it away, uh, I might be able to crawl through there. Burning hands, level one. <laughs> okay. Uh, just roll damage. It's not. It's not easy to uh, to hit or not easy to miss. I should say at this point. Fourteen. Nice. Big yep, you are making a significant hole in it. There's parts of it which are quite melted now, and you could crawl through. It's a little bit of a heat damage or heat uh, uh, danger. As you can see, the melting, the metal is kind of melting a little bit. The springs and cogs and things on the inside now revealed are all uh, kind of uh, uh, turning into slag. Produce flame. <laughs> okay, roll damage. And I'll keep producing flames until, in retrospect, I probably just should have done that, done that from the beginning and saved the level one slot. But hey, thinking. No, produce flame doesn't do a lot either. So, um, I thought it was well, maybe one. I, I just looked it up and I, I just fucking forgot what it was. Well, I think it is one d eight. It's not a huge amount, but okay, it's a cantrip after all. Yeah. Um, so three. Yep. Yeah, you you get the feeling that doing this for a while is going to get you through. It's going to be melted slag, so it'll be harder for anyone else to move through. Um, you won't have a problem with the heat, but others might. Okay. And it's right. kind of as soon as we can get like any kind of good enough clearance, we can go through, I guess. Okay. Does anybody have or anything that? Yeah. I can spit poison on it. <laughs> that because... might just aeros aerosolize and kill us all. But okay. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be that bothered by poison, to be honest. It's 556, by the way. Oh, yeah. So I'll say that it does take you about five minutes of kind of burning it and then very carefully walking through. And I will say that you also end up on the other side of the door. The door is closed, uh, but I think you figured out the idea behind the door to, uh, to uh, uh, remove the... Oop, yeah, you accidentally grabbed the whole room putting the room back in order there earthquake earthquake um ah. you do figure out the trick to to the using the hand essentially to to un uh to unscrew the door uh to oh force it to open uh, i think you had already figured that out uh silas if not i just gave you something for free um uh, and you kind of yeah, he was, something about the, the he hand was, things the yeah. fingers in the finger slots and such yeah we get yeah you kind of left. you kind of imagine that 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 was the intention with the build of these particular doors. They are modified to be opened by those robotic things, if necessary. Uh, how they avoid the other things, you're not sure, but they seem to. Um, and so you will get through the other side. I don't think I can remove that line at the moment, so I'm just going to see if I can grab it. Oh. Ah, uh, I just... Okay. I'm there. not going to remember, so... There we go. <laughs> The doorway is now open, so you'll be able to see through. And you start to make your way through, and that, unfortunately, will be it for tonight, as we are running short on time. But, congratulations, you've saved Marigold. Now, Yay. hopefully, you can save Sandy as well. Thank yeah. you very much for my players for putting up with my difficulties <laughs> with all the technology tonight. Seems like I'm always apologizing for that. Uh, but uh, thank you also for watching. If you've been watching, you can catch up on all the previous episodes at youtube.com slash ENCIF1. If you've just watched this one on YouTube, you can also catch them live on Sundays at 3 o'clock Atlantic time on twitch.tv slash ENCIF1. 
Uh, and uh, we will return in the new year. It looks like the 2nd of January is going to be our next game. And, uh, yeah, look forward to that. Thanks once again to my players. Happy holidays. If you happen to be watching this during the holidays. If you're not, just enjoy whatever holidays are near you. Just make make one up. Happy All week off work. Happy Omesha Day. How about that one? That hey. It's <laughs> Festin. Festin, that's true. It is Festin. Nice. All right. Take care. Uh, and we'll see you again in the future.